Uh, there's a lot of cars here, isn't there? Good turn it. Now, one thing, he's got plenty of wood for his stove. Okay. okay. Jim Fern, contact, is it? Aye, Jim, Jim Fern's a. Well, I don't know who it'll be, that's. Right. Oh, there's Jim Deer. I do. The brilliant hat there. You're yeah. going to have the, about the same amount of rods when you leave, Jim. I'm hoping so, are you? Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Nice to see you. Long time. Hi, it's Russ. How's it's Jim. Hey, Russ, you okay, mate? Nice to meet you, mate. Hi. Uh. Yeah, we're just um, we're just making a, a final tally that we've put everything out. <laughs> So, oh, right. um, so yeah, sorry. Um, Am I putting you off your counting? You need more fingers. Yeah. You know, mate, one, <laughs> one job's maximum I can do at a time. That's it for me. Um, so, foundations, there should be three foundations. Yeah. Three sonics. No, four sonics. Three sonics. Four ninety-five now. Six nine. 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 <laughs> That's another thing, right? Yeah, and you've well, got the sense in your way there. That then, Britain Gooses or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I've just got the running line on to chop the head off and put the running line on. Are you fishing, you seen? None, but I had a good chat with Simon. So. He's fishing there, isn't it? Is he? This week, whenever he can, I think. So. Apparently, his mum wasn't very good. Is he? Oh, right. So I guess he, he was from there at one point. It's not cold at all. It's not, it's not. It's not very warm. Is it 44 degrees of water yesterday here? Yeah. Is it? That's quite good, isn't it? Uh -huh. For the height, it's hot and tiny here. It's quite clear. It's flatter down there, that's like the bottom part of the shallow. I remember fishing down there, right enough. Maybe that's where you go. Mm -hmm. Weedy belt, maybe. Under the bridge. Hmm. Ah, oh, there's a bit of air could get on the gravel if you had wellies or waders, right enough. Is somebody going to wait and have a shot of fishing? Everything's there all the time. Um, you just do it. It's okay. You're fishing It's okay. What's your name? Jose. Nice to meet you, man. Chris. Pleasure to meet you. And you? Cameron. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How are you? Oh, very good. How are you, sir? Please, please meet you. Oh, I've not been knighted. I'm not, I've not been knighted. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just an Ian. Well, glad you're here. <laughs> glad you're here. It's going to be a nice day of casting. Mm. You're going to show us how to do it properly. Well, no, I'm going to talk about the range of rods a little bit, though, anyway, and uh -huh. uh, have a cast with everybody. And then Peter and Simon have a nice little presentation to give, and so, right. yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, it'll be a good day. Off to a good start. I think there's a half brick in the kettle though. Yeah. <laughs> it's ta taking a bit of time. Yeah. 
A watch ought to never boil. No, it doesn't. Gross war fishermen were bad. Just get some water. See, there's nothing stronger. Mm. It's not too bad in the sun. But even in February it was warm in the sun. Yeah. Is it Mr. Baines? Yes. Yeah? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Thought I recognised uh, the voice. <laughs> oh, right. Are you? Yeah. yeah there's yeah. No, not many people see my face. Yeah. What's your, what's your name? I'm, I'm George Besant. Uh, I fish West Newbiggin. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so uh, you're always fishing the pools I fish. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, Catching a lot think, more fish than I do, too. Oh, right. <laughs> I think I'm fishing there on... Friday. Uh huh. Uh -huh. With uh, John Peace. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a fish with John. Sorry, what was your name? Uh, George Besant. George. Yeah. Right, George. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's... Did you get a cup of tea? I've had coffee, yes. All right. Are you part of the organisers? No, no, no. I'm I'm only here for the fun uh, and a cup yeah. of tea. Uh, yeah. see, if I, see if somebody can teach me how to cast properly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Take away some of the bad habits, or all of the bad habits. Mm. Yeah, you see all these lovely casters, but it's, it's not all about that. No, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everybody, um, everybody here? You can do what you like. Nope. Everybody here. Yeah. About to be somebody missing. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you all for, for making the effort today. Um, this is our guide fly fishing Rio Sage Road Show. Um, great opportunity as you can imagine to try all new products from Real and Sage. Today we've got um, Peter Knox, um, who some of you are going to be going into in a second to see the pieces basically the Sage Rod Designer. We've got Chris Anderson over there, who's um, Real's worldwide sales and, uh, marketing manager. Um, and of course we've got Simon who, not surprisingly, because he's not until after me, he's gone fishing. So, um, you, you've all familiarised yourself, I hope, with a, with a list at the side of the door. Um, so we're splitting you into two groups. Um, the group one is going to be coming with me. Um, we're going to be going to the, the rod area with Chris. Um, group two will be going in for a presentation by Peter Knox. Um, as soon as that presentation finishes thereabouts, we will switch. Uh, the outside lot will go in and vice versa. Then we'll have something to eat. Um, and then we'll, we'll have Simon for the afternoon where we'll be looking at all things. Rio is going to be doing a presentation on the different technologies, tapers, things like that, um, and again, more casting outside. So, if, um, if group two want to make your way inside, uh, and if group one want to come with me. Come on, wander over here, I got a few rods laid out to chat about. Slide in, gentlemen, so I don't have to yell. <laughs> I'm not going to do any casting here. Are you suffering from a hangover? <laughs> not yet. No, oh, right. Not yet. No, I finally got a good night's sleep last night and got to sleep all the way through the night. So um, so I may have a few more pints tonight. We'll oh. see how that goes. <laughs> oh. Awesome. How's everybody doing? Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, good. Good. good to see you all. My name's Chris Anderson. Um, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep this pretty short and sweet. I think the point of this is to to get you all casting some rods and and uh, so. But but really, I just I just want to talk about a few of the rods here um, that we've got on the rack to cast. Um, we've got the full range of double handers here. Um, our igniter and X and Sonic double handers, uh, both spay and switch rods. 
trust you're probably mostly pretty familiar with those. Um, so I'm just going to talk about a few of the single handers and then we'll turn you loose and I'll kind of walk in between the groups and um, we can chat about, about the rods you're casting if you'd like. If you've got questions about any of them, just, just pick my brain. That's what I'm here for. Um, you know, I'm going to start by talking about kind of our, our three core single handers. Our three, they're all fast action rods. Our Gosworth, you dog. You are a dog. <laughs> nice. All right, we'll get one. Uh, <laughs> love it. Um, that is priceless. I knew that was going to happen. Um, so our three core core rods today in our single handers are our R8 rod, our Sonic rod, and our foundation rod. R8 is our top of the line. It's our current flagship rod from Sage. It's our it's our latest technology, our R8 core technology, which you'll hear Peter talk about here shortly. Um, he'll talk about the technology behind it, but the R8 core, it's our fast, it's a fast action rod, it's our flagship rod of today. Um, the X-Rod had previously been our fast action flagship rod, and um, the one rod before that, the Z-axis before that. And, um, you know, what I've noticed about them over time, especially the fast action rods of today, you know, as they continue to have more and more feel, you know, I think back, I've been with Sage for 20 years, and I think back to, um, you know, some of the rods that, that were designed and some of the fast action flagship rods back going back to the XP and before, um, you know, those fast action rods, they all had a very quick tip recovery, you know, they were fast action, they had a quick tip recovery, which means that they're going to generate a lot of line speed, which means that you can form tight loops that, that cut through the wind really well. They tend to go further and they tend to carry a big variety of flies. You know, they're high performance rods. And, and you know, here two, four, a lot of those fast direction rods were just didn't have a lot of feel. They were pretty stiff all the way throughout the blank, right? Um, and what I've noticed over the years with fast action rods is that they're getting more soulful. They're getting to have a lot more feel. The tip recovers super quickly, so you get those performance benefits out of it, those tight loops and the high line speed and the distance if you want it. Um, but what's changed is that you can feel them load now. They load super, super easily. You get a lot more feedback and feel all the way down to your hand. And so they load easier at short distances. And at the end of the day, to me, they're just more pleasant to fish and cast. You've got more connection with the fly, and, and it's just a more pleasant angling experience, casting experience. <laughs> you know, Sonic rods are uh, kind of the next step down in performance. It's a little lower price point. Um, as it is, the best technologies tend to have higher, higher cost materials and componentry, and, and the rods cost more. And, you know, Sonic is kind of the next step down. This is the kinetic technology same technology we had in the one rods um, it's also a fast action rod in a pretty big range from uh, three all the way up to eight weight with again with the notable models in between um, for this region as well they're beautiful rods and, and and you'll enjoy casting these as well and then you've got the foundation rod it's our lowest price point rod um, still a great rod you know it's a it's a fast action rod as well it's a little smaller more concise line from a four weight up to a nine weight um, and in not as many models in between but we still do a 7100 in the foundation um, what's interesting about the foundation it's it's kind of our lowest price point rod now but you know we still use the same technology and materials in this as we did in the venerable XP you know, our flagship rod not that many years ago, and it was our best technology not that many years ago. And so, you know, even these lower price point rods today are, are really, really awesome rods, great technology, good performance rods. Uh, you guys have any questions for me right now? <coughs> All right, let's go for it, fellas. Let's go for it. Um, yeah, have a cast. Again, if you could probably asking a little bit too much now but if you can roughly remember where they were from <laughs> um, that would make our job even easier as well um, I'm sure I remember <laughs> yeah. and I say that loudly so <laughs> no. um, we've got some, we've got <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think I'm getting it right, Jim. No, it's fine, mate. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> How are you doing? Ian. Have a waggle. It's fun. Yeah. Hi, Finn. How are you doing? I recognise no. you up there, but you were uh, busy no, talking. I, I never, never caught you. Uh, right. Scott, Scott, oh, Ian. Nice to meet you. Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guy does the videos up at Kaduna. Under uh, uh, other places. Uh, I, thought, uh, I thought I recognised the voice. I thought I recognised uh, that voice. Ian, uh, Ian, uh, Ian being no, special. No, no. Aye, aye. Scott's got the dart there. Oh, mate. Are you wanting to try one? I mean, I'm, I I'm, I'm with guide now, so I've, I've got, got all these eyes. So. Have you? Oh, very good. So, well, would you recommend? I've never held a trout rod for probably five years. Well, the only time I've really used them is when I've been out in the Outer Hebrides and, you know, just fishing for sea trout in the wee, the wee waters. That's it. I mean, I, I use that, that 10 5 weight. Which is an absolute ugly. I'll have a wee shot of that then. The five weight. Oh, is there something? Up here. Oh, that's all right. I could pull one over. Yeah, I could fight off another rod. Am I still getting close? I need I need a smaller rod. Oh, I thought you were swapping me over. No, I'm going to take this up to Richard just to compare the two different lines. All right. Have you had any fish yet, Ian? I've only been out twice this year. Oh, I'm glad you would like uh, to think, you know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, you know. So, I've, 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 as I say, I've been out twice, uh, but the water's been high. I was at Corn, Corn Hill with Brendan. All right, yeah. Uh, he sent me a text the other day, friend. Did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I can't even get into the zone yet till this show's over. Aye. Uh, Am uh, I? Get up to the eyes and things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But oh. in the next couple of weeks, after the next week or two, uh -huh. we'll have to fish together one day. Ian. Oh, that'd be good, Jim. That'd be good. We will do. It's a Hi. Sorry? It's a, I think it's an eight weight, 13 foot. Quite a, quite a nice light rod. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Is it the, um, 13 foot eight? 13 foot eight, aye. Is it? Alright, oh, I, I noticed it's got a different tip in it right enough. Quite an easy. You want the cast with it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the Sage Igniter, um, that's, that's more what I would say, Wait, like, I'm that, that faster action, um, especially in the... Um, Wait, the heavier lane size? Yeah, yeah ah. 15 foot Igniter, which to be fair, was largely made for the, for the British market anyway. Hang on, have you cast that one? Have you cast that? No, I haven't. I'll need to have a shot. on the rack. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's got, it's got a schedule on it. Right, I was fishing with my old uh, Tadaxis. Right. Uh, with the, the Skagit eye flight. Yeah. The other day there, and it, it was chucking it right out every time I was casting as far as I wanted to. It was pulling another bit of line off the. Sorry, what the length of rod would be? Uh... It was a 15 foot. Right, try this then. One second. Let me get you this. Right. I've got a 15 foot, 10 weight, 3 inch per second tip on the end of it. Right. Now, for fishing, yeah, I mean, providing the tips at least the same density, right? Uh huh. Um, but it's. You know, you can cast it with even longer tips to be fair, but I wouldn't really recommend any less than 15 feet. Right. Not with a 15 foot rod anyway. Because the anchor's just gonna it's just gonna blow. But have a cast with this, it'll, I mean you'll soon you'll soon get into the zone of this. It, it takes um, it's obviously digging in a lot more. But you'll see what I mean. I mean, bear in mind this is a 725. Alright, it's quite a heavy Quite a heavy is that a, a 10 weight rod? That's right, yeah. This is, this is um, the Sage Ignite, 15 footer. So it'll be quite a stiff rod if it can handle yeah, that well, weight. Exactly, you can see, can't you, with a loop shape. It's quite tight loops, even off you know, such a heavy line. It's not really buckling it. I mean, this is the heaviest that they'll, they'll go to have a cast with that. It's quite an awkward beat to fish with all these stones. Yeah, it's got to be careful, haven't you? Now you can feel it loading the rod right oh, enough. Yeah. Can I try filling out some line? I uh, once you get a wee bit more out the top of the yeah, yeah, the rod. It's definitely a, a, a good way to, it's you say it turns over great because it tapers right down. And it it's, holds up, doesn't it? It's not like uh, the ball of spaghetti that often a skadget can be. Aye. Uh, well, I've, I've got one of the early skadgets. The, the first ones that you could change over the, yeah. add the body on. Yeah, put the I on it, so. I, it, It's just absolutely useless. I can't get it to work. I can't get it to work in any of the rods. Sort after one, that well into the old one, the, the, the very first. Ah, it's, uh, it's all right if you put on really long, heavy, sinking tips. But, but look at that. This went to the river, it's, it's, what, it's all you need to, to yeah, cover the fish. The uh -huh. so this time of year, a bit of water on, but this is. Three old meter shooting line. So it changes feet every ten feet. Right. Sorry, it changes colour every ten feet. Uh -huh. So at the minute you've got you're doing a thirty foot shoot. Uh-huh. Now that, that's not a bad range to be fair. Really and it's it's what it's still wanting to pull the real Uh -huh. The head's 25. Right. And you've got a 15 foot rod as well. There's a, there's a lever on the end. So, you know, you're getting into territory like 90 foot. 
And how long have they had the game changer out for? Uh, I want to say. I heard Brendan talking about it last year. He, he mentioned it, and I had never heard of it before. I want to say. Four years. Is it as long as that, right? Before COVID, anyway. Right. And we've definitely had them on the tweet. Right. Like doing these uh huh. So some of the killers on the tweet, they really. Mm -hmm. That's your setup. You go with the D quite a lot. Sorry, I used to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's for any type of spring stuff or extra water or whatever. Hmm. Uh huh. Uh, right, it's up. All right, I'll, I'll just get in the back of the cab in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, come on in if anyone at the door wants to come in and grab a seat. There's a you can squeeze up there. And... Well, welcome. Thank you very much for coming into this uh, session. Really nice. I'm Simon, Rio, uh, and I'm here to talk about Rio, Flylines, and we're talking about technologies, tiers, and new products. That's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, and really, it's because uh, it's kind of an open forum type thing. In that, if you've got any questions, I'm not addressing. Please ask. The Elite is our top of the range family. The Elite family uh, lines will have a, a black header to them, right in the box here. So if this is a freshwater line, you might be able to see it's kind of got black and matte black and uh, black header. Uh, well, if it's a salmon line in the Elite, again, it's going to have this black. So anything in the black, it might also say the word Elite as a kind of a bigger giveaway than just looking at black. <laughs> That's also a good concept. But some people are visual, some people want color recognition, right? And so if you see it as a black box, it's going to be an elite. And if it's in this kind of dark, greeny blue box, that's going to be in the premier family. And then the dark gray box, that's going to be what's called the avid family. Again, it'll say in the top corner which family it is. And then the light gray box is what's called our mainstream family, our bottom price point family. Again, the top three tiers have front and back welded loops. These are new changes evolving through the range. And then when you get to the color changes, right, the Elite family have Surefire, which is a three color change. When you make a fly line, I, I really wish I'd brought my, my test tubes of chemicals over because I've got these test tubes and uh, it's quite interesting to see what the ingredients are of lines. I have done it in the past, so some people might remember them. So a fly line is made of liquid PVC, or made of PVC, it starts as a liquid PVC. And when you have this liquid PVC, if you were just to take this liquid PVC, and pour it in one of these cups, and, and put it in the oven and bake it as a cookie type thing, and pull it out, and you get this hard resin, and this hard resin, in its natural state, sinks about one and a half inches a second. So you chuck it in and you'll watch it, and just start to sink. And of course, not every fly line needs to sink at one and a half inches a second. Some have to float, some have to sink faster. So when they do that, you have to add other chemicals. You add either powdered tungsten to make it sink quicker, or you add what's called microspheres, tiny, tiny glass spheres that make it float. So there's chemicals that you add to these lines to, to make these density changes. So the long-winded story of what ingredients mean is basically the cheaper the chemical, the bigger the ball is, right? They're all like dust particles. So the bigger the dust particle, the worse the result is in the fly line. If, if, I, I liken the story to uh, glass paper or sandpaper. Right? If you have a super, super finest grade of sandpaper, it's pretty smooth. And if you have the coarsest grade of sandpaper, it's pretty rough. So the mainstream type lines have 
what's called our, we measure our, our spheres in microns, it's a 30 micron size, it's just a number for most people, but the Elite and Premier have a 60 micron, it's, about a, it's a tinier, finer, super softer dust, so it creates smoother lines, longer lasting lines, that's the benefit of it, but they're way more expensive because they are a higher grade quality material. Well, thank you. Thank you all for hanging around. That was really good. I uh, hope there's some good information. Again, if, if something comes to you this afternoon whilst you're out there, ask away. We're all going to help you out with that. For those of you who want to go and try some of these lines, we talked about the different technologies. Go and try them out. Um, um, what, what's the plan? What else, what else are we doing? One thing quickly. If you haven't already ticked off your name, most of you have, at the end, tick the register. There's a reason you'll find out why. Uh, an inch of the reels, um, there's a little sticker, um, and the yellow or orange sticker denotes that it's elite. Right, uh, right, I see. Yeah. Right. Um, so that denotes the triple colour, um, Connect 4 Plus, Slick Cast, and the, the ones with the blue stickers there are the Ooh. Premiers, and the greens are the, the, the Avid. So, so that's an elite one? Yeah, that's the, um, the Elite Scandi outbound, um, 8-9. Right. Um, on X. So that, that, that's a, the outbound, that's the one that's integrated? That's right. Ah, that's right. 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 Well, maybe I'll have a shot of that. Oh, the, the wind, Dave, the, that was a wind assisted one downstream. <laughs> I need that. Oh, I know, the breeze is definitely picked up. Ah, uh, it's. It is. It's only an eight week. Yes. Easy, but it's all about timing. Aye, creating your loop is. Well, when you loop there, they just landed on the water and they lifted it off the water, didn't have a lift or anything. You know the. the what? The way Simon Gosworth teaches the single stay, he says first move is lift, not just lift. Aye. Nobody does it exactly like he says. And technically, no one speaks the cast properly because I've watched. He uh -huh. beautifully, but it's not the way he says either. It's similar, but it's not the same. Nice one to use though. It oh, is. Nice summer riding. Oh aye. Give yourself lots of room, put it all the way up soon. Alright. Before you go, if you get sick and you decide to leave, head back in before you go because there's some bags with some tippet and hats and things for people to take with you. Some free oh, bits and pieces. It's a, one or two. Because there's um it's like a bag with stickers and various things, and then you can pick some tippets and leaders to take with you when you go. Right. All right. Okay. That's right. kind of you. Thank you. What's, what's your name? Sorry. David. David. Right. David. Do you are you based in in, the, in Newcastle yeah, or the yeah, shop? Well, I'm a manager for guides, so I run a right. social website, do all the photography and everything. Like that. You do the photography. Most of it. Me uh -huh. and between me and Lad, the other guy who's here, do uh -huh. all the cameras. And... You ever...